Hello, this is Sammy Morris, and I'm interviewing Cassandra Cady. Is it Aggie or Aggie? Aggie. Aggie Chandler for the Purdue Oral History Program in the Archives. The date is September 25th, 2017. Katie, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Um, I think just for future researchers, we could talk a little bit about where you grew up. And okay. if you could tell me, just for the record, your full name, where you were born, okay. and where you grew up. Okay. My full name is Cassandra Delane A.G. That's my birth name. Katie is the name that I picked up, f friends and family. There's a story behind that, but I won't get into that. Okay. So, so Katie is what family and friends call me. I was born in Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, wow. Um, and my parents grew up in rural Alabama. Yeah, I didn't know that. And at the age of about two, my family was part of that great migration from the south really? up through up 65, and um, they moved to Gary, Indiana, when I was just a toddler. See, I saw that in the yearbook, Gary, yeah. and I just assumed you were born in Indiana. So. I, I was not. Okay. I, um, I am a child of the South, and, mm -hmm. and, and I would go back every summer um, to hang out with my cousins, and so I was a city kid coming down to, well, they lived in Birmingham. My grandparents at the time were still in rural Alabama. and But whenever I'd go down there, it was like, I can't wait to get to the city to hang with my cousins oh. there. <laughs> so, so, so that tradition is there. I mean, we're talking red clay roads. So you and, were and, toddler age. Yeah, I was when, toddler age. When your age. parents decided this, do you remember anything about the, dis the big decision to move? I don't remember any of that. That is through the context of my parents and my siblings. But coming back, I hear the stories because my dad is one of, uh, he's got five brothers and one sister, uh -huh. if I got the math right. And so two of them migrated, the two youngest um, migrated to Houston. Okay. My Otis, my, my uncle Arthur, and my uncle uh, Otis and my aunt Ella May stayed in Birmingham, you know, moved yes. from the country to uh, Birmingham. And my dad, because my mom's family, my mom, Alice A.G., um, excuse me, Alice Brackett, at, at the, and Alice A.G., that's my mom, was also, she was born in Chicago. Okay. And then my, she was raised by her uncle, the youngest of her grand, uh, of her mother's siblings. Yeah. So, okay. but then, so we had a segment of our family that was in the Gary area. Okay. So that's where we, we, we moved to. And I remember my first re memory was we stayed in my Uncle Bill's uh, and on Eartha's basement. So our entire family stayed there. And then across the alley, was my aunt, my great aunt Doris, and Uncle Manuel, and my aunt Minnie, oh, nice. and so it was a family area there. So you at and least knew your family. I knew. Yeah. I knew. Oh, yeah. we have a big family. We have family reunions. That rich family history, that's and great. the ties are back to, to, to Alabama. So, Wonderful. So yeah, that's really yeah, interesting. yeah, yeah. So I, I was born. At, I, I know it was Family Hospital there in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. And so that means probably that you started school in Gary. Right? Started school in Gary. Okay. My, Where did you my, go? I'm a Gary girl. I, <laughs> I started at w Williams Elementary, um, and I went there for kindergarten and first grade. And I remember distinctly when our home was built. And, and Gary, across from my aunt, my mom's oldest sister, mm -hmm. Aunt, Ella, uh, Aunt Hallie and Uncle Curtis, and they have four kids with my first cousin. So we would come and watch the house being built, and uh, so that was an exciting time. I bet. Uh, my, my dad worked at Inland Steel. My mom's a custodian at Lou Wallace High School. Well, well, she was at a different place then, but she had... I think it's 25 years in the school system wow. there. So, so working class, blue collar, yeah. and and uh, my dad's and my parents' dream for all of us: you're going to college. Oh, that's you good. you will go to college. They knew. They, they knew. knew. So so that was the 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 standard. That was what what I was supposed to do. You were raised. Uh, yeah, that. I was raised that way. So 
um, when we moved, I went to Ernie Pyle. Okay. And I remember going to second grade. I was in Mrs. Paul class and crying and because I didn't know anybody. And, and she met me at the door. And uh, that was my introduction to a new elementary school, the, the new uh, neighborhood. And so that was, that was my it it was cool I had wonderful friends yeah. and I, I think my mom I think I had one birthday party my siblings will tell you a different story but uh it was a way of uh me getting acclimated mm -hmm. and I just remember Mrs. Paul just being the sweetest person and those friends are still a, a lot of them are still my friends. Facebook has kind of brought this incredible. this this community together. So I I went to Ernie Pyle and then Tolleston Junior High School. Okay, um, I was always active in activities there. I was vice president of my class, and mm -hmm. I, I, ironically enough, I had lunch with Alice Welch, who was president of our class. She lives in Lafayette, and we oh reconnected. Wow. So so it's just. You know, small world. Yeah. I went to Tolleston Junior High School, so ninth grade is when that ended. And I thought I was going to go to Westside High School, where uh -huh. my where my older uh, siblings, four of us, uh -huh. Beverly, uh, Andre, me, and then my youngest brother, Dion. So you're the third oldest. I'm the okay. third oldest, knee baby, as they call <laughs> me. Um, so that, I ended up going to Lou Wallace High School, where my mom worked. I was very upset about that, that because at, I, I, it, and at the time, Lou Wallace was probably about 25, 20% mm. black and 80% white, mm -hmm. um, and so there was, um, it was a, it was a culture shock in some ways, because all of my school, schooling was mostly African American, some few Hispanic, mm -hmm. and and white, but but Gary, of course, at the time was it in, in a transition. It was a you know Gary had the first one of the first African American mayors in the mm -hmm. country. So just a lot of pride. We I mean I have wonderful teachers, wonderful sense of community. So, so so that was my undergirding. Mm -hmm. So when I was moved to this high school and I had to get acclimated mm -hmm. and and meet. There were some friends that I knew from Williams uh, and from a few from junior high that oh, I knew, but um, it was a new experience for me. I so, bet that was so, a big change. So that was a big change, and but my mom wanted me there because she was there, and also she wanted me exposed to everything, and she knew that the world was not the bubble that I was in, and so I, I fought it all the way, but once I got there, she said, if you want to transfer... You can, knowing good and well that once I got there, that that I would embrace it. She was um, trying to help you. She by, was trying by to, making it a little difficult. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah. did that affect your relationship with her too? Because I know when I was in high school, I was embarrassed by everything my parents did. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and and to this day, I, 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 I remember, and I think that was really, yeah, I was embarrassed. Yeah. Um, because I was like, there's my mom, and she arrived at school towards the end of the day. So at first I would kind of avoid her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and then after a while it was, my mom is here. Mm -hmm. And she was, she, people at her services, some of my friends came up, your mom helped me. And it was, she, she was a counselor mm -hmm. in her role as custodian. As she met all the kids, she spoke to everybody. So it was a beautiful testament. Mm -hmm. to her to to hear the things that people said about her but as a teenager I didn't think of it as that way I was like oh I'm embarrassed yeah I'm embarrassed no one so, would, would want their parents with them all the time <laughs> absolutely so I was like ah. but my mom was there saying you, you know I was always a good student I was mm -hmm. on you know on a roll I was in in um uh, student government mm -hmm. I sang in the choir so Active, very active, and good. from from grade school on. So, mm -hmm. so that's that's in my DNA. Well, did so. you have favorite subjects when you were in high school? I mean, were you already thinking about? I know you said it was important to your parents that you go to college. Yeah, yeah. Were you already thinking about what you might want to study when you go off, or was it too early at that? Point? It was probably too early. I I I, I did well in. Oh, I loved English. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I did well in my math and science. Um, but 
I wanted to have my own business. Mm-hmm. I just kind of knew that. I have a contract that my cousin Veronica, who, who's in fashion design, and I wrote, we were going to create a business called So Crow. She sews and I do crocheting. Oh, my And goodness. so so we have our little business plan from sixth grade. That's incredible. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Please I, tell me one of you saved it. <laughs> it's in the archive. Oh, that's wonderful. It is that's in the archive. Like so so that's, that's I'm, I honor society, seventh and eighth grade. I had never been on a plane before. I crocheted. I, I was all, you know, between Sandra Bell and I, we were like the number one cookie salesperson. So whenever I came around the frame, I was like, okay, so what are you selling? Is it Girl Scout cookies? Do you have hats for crocheting? So I made my, I earned my money to go on our Honest Society trip to New York by crocheting hats for my brother, who is a big football, you know, he played football. Yeah. Orange and blue, again, I wanted to go to West Side High School, uh-huh. but I ended up at Lou Wallace. So, so yes. Yeah, yeah that, it that. sounds like you had goals from a very early age. I did. <laughs> I really did. And and I, th- I think I was going to have my own business. I was going to have a a bowling alley in my house. And then I was going to, when, when I retired, I had all these, I was going to teach. That was going to be my retirement. Oh, so, so so I have had my own business. I have had uh, my married, divorced. Yeah. The, that wasn't in the script, but it happened. And, yeah. and I raised my children. Um, my youngest since the age of three as a as a divorced single mom and so 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 those goals so so that was on the trajectory of Mm -hmm. you're going to have your own business and you're going to do this and you wanted you know corporate america came about so i knew that i wanted to to make my family proud yeah um growing up during that time there was i felt like I had the weight of not only my family, but the entire race on mm-hmm. my shoulders yeah. because we were the generation post, you know, right after the Civil Rights Movement. Mm-hmm. And there was, you know, you, you know, me going to Purdue, it was a big deal. And, and, and you, you know, so you got to do well. Your family is counting on All those expectations. All those expectations yeah. weighed heavy sure. on me, weighed heavy on me. So, yeah. so, so, so that's, that's kind of part of the DNA mm-hmm. of, of, of my generation. Well, it sounds of, like you were yeah. very driven and yeah, then you also I'm, had these external factors that yeah. were coming in. So, um, I'm curious, I'm, I'm guessing since you did so much growing up in Gary that you knew kind of about Purdue from a young age or what do you remember when you first started thinking Purdue? Or I, I never thought Purdue. Really? I never thought Purdue. A couple of reasons. My, I'm a deacon's daughter. Uh-huh. Um, and I, strict household. You know, we had some freedoms, but I want, my goal was to get out of Indiana so I wouldn't be a drive away. Yeah. So Georgia Tech. Uh, that that was on my radar, um, and that process of school because my parents didn't necessarily know my, my, my older brother uh, w- was recruited for football, and so we had folks coming to our house, et cetera. So I saw his recruitment from that perspective, and he ended up at an HBCU, and my sister went to a tech school in Chicago. So that process of applications and large, you know, universities, that was kind of foreign to me. Mm -hmm. So Purdue was not on my radar. Interesting. And that story is, I can tell it now, that's that's where Dr. Cornell Bell. Yes, I wanted to know how that all came about. So at Tolleson Junior High School, Dr. Bell was actually one of the principals there. I don't know if he's a principal during my time. And he was principal for one of my siblings, I don't know whether it was Andrea or Beverly, at Tolleston as well. Okay. So Dr. Bell, I knew of Dr. Bell, but when Dr. Bell came to my high school and he got my name, he came to my home. The famous Dr. Bell knock wow. on the door. So. I haven't filled out any applications because it's senior year and I'm doing my thing. 
college is going to happen, but I did not have that skill set or, or knowledge to say you got to do A, B, C, D, sure. and or E. Right. E, I was a good student. I'd taken the, the SAT, whatever, but I did not have this path to Purdue. It mm-hmm. was not on the radar that you need to go to Purdue. That, right. that, that wasn't, it wasn't family history. Too close so, to home. Yeah, it's too close <laughs> to home. That, that's my only thought. So when Dr. Bell knocked on the door and he came in and my parents, you know, um, ushered him up our up the stairs to sit on the couch and start talking and and I'm sitting there going hi doctor you know Dr. Barry remember him and he talked about the Purdue program and I'm sitting there would you please leave that is an hour away would you just go away and I told him I said I want to go to Georgia Tech he goes why would you want to go to a school whose program is patterned after Purdue? Oh, wow. And I just said, I want to go to Georgia Tech. And I'm looking at my parents, and they are, they're so. It's a done deal. And I'm looking at him like, I don't like you. I need you to leave. I do not want to be in Indiana. So that was what was going on in my mind. So that was my introduction from a Purdue perspective and going to Purdue. Wow. Had your so, parents ever met him before? Yes, Dr. Bell. They my, knew him. My parents, uh-huh. if nobody else was at Parents Teachers Day, <laughs> or, 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 or my parents were there. <laughs> they were there. Mom would take off work. Dad would figure out. They were there. So um, I knew when he left. But in my 17-year-old mind, eight, 16, 17-year-old mind, I thought, I'm not doing this. I'm not filling out that application. Filled out my Georgia Tech. Filled it out late. I didn't even fill out my dorm application because somehow this thing was going to implode and I wasn't going to go to Purdue because <laughs> I was going to get out of Indiana. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm just wondering how long he might have had his eye on you because I know he was recruiting talent yeah, for the yeah, program. Yeah, yeah, So I, I, I don't know, but I did not want him to have his eye on me because <laughs> I did not want to be in Indiana. So, so what uh, happened between, so between no, absolutely no uh, Purdue to coming? Coming to Purdue. My parents said, Dr. Bell, we look forward to you. My, my daughter, uh, our daughter coming to Purdue, and I'm sitting there going, I, I don't believe this, but we did what our parents told us. Yeah. I knew it was not going to be, I didn't have a choice, but I still, in the back of my mind, go, I can sabotage this. <laughs> so I didn't fill out the housing application. Oh, my goodness. Dr. Bell called my parents and told my parents, we don't have Cassandra's housing application. Oh my goodness. You were in trouble. <laughs> Was I in trouble? So I took the application, checked the box. Turned out I checked no visitation, women's dorm. And I was placed in Meredith Hall on the third floor, Northwest, no visitation floor. Does that mean you can't have guests? You can't have guests. Men have to <laughs> announce themselves on the floor. Oh, my goodness. You might have been the first person ever to say, I don't want any guests. <laughs> and when I, when I came on the BOP program, I graduated on, I think it was June 7th. I've, it'll be in that. In the archives. <laughs> in, in the archives. That Friday or that fall on Sunday, less than a week later, I was on Purdue's campus. Wow. What a so whirlwind. it was a whirlwind, and it was a whirlwind. So I haven't looked back. But that during that summer, folks were getting their dorm assignments, and so I go over to Northwest, and 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 my friends were assigned a Fowler course. They were like, "How did you get Meredith?" I don't know, because nobody else was in Meredith, and so I march over. Uh, oh, one of the counselors. She goes, "I'm at the dorm there," and 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 they were like, "Oh, you're in the Novis." I said, "Novis." What's that? You can't get visitors, you know, male visitors. I was like, no way. You can't. Are you, you're kidding me. I didn't do that. So she said, we'll set up an appointment with you with the dorm 
um, the director like the of the dorm. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, director of the dorm. I'm mad. Wow. Uh, I'm upset. How that, happened? Right. How that happened? So I'm in there and I'm like, how did I get assigned to the novice? She pulls out my application <laughs> and this big check placed by this 17 year old, I am not going to Purdue. And why am I filling out this application by handwriting? You remember shrinking violet? <laughs> yeah. I went from this down to. Oh my goodness. Wow. So I quietly, thank you very much, shook her hand. And in the fall, when we moved in, you'd holler down the hall, man on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody kept their ears open yeah, for that. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> My, in order for my dad to come in and help move my things. Wow. So, so that meant everybody on your floor. Everybody, yeah. They were, that was just a no male floor. No male floor. Wow. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I could see where, you know, maybe some parents wouldn't want their Absolutely. children. Absolutely. But, but the, you didn't know that you had done that to yourself I didn't, until they so, <laughs> so, so, so I self <laughs> <laughs> subscribed. Maybe you, were, you were trying to <laughs> protect your own virtue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, oh, wait, it was called the Virgin Vault. Oh my goodness. Yes. Wow. Yes. So that's my Meredith story. So this would have been fall of 77, is that right? Fall of 77. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And after Absolutely. You, you're in Meredith for a semester, are you thinking about moving at that point? Oh, or are you oh, wanting to stay? I, 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 I love Meredith. I got to get off that floor. <laughs> <laughs> that would really restrict your social uh, activity. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got to get off that floor. So that was the joke. That I, I kind of mumbled, where are you? I'm in Meredith. Uh, third. Oh, you're in the Virgin Ball. So. <laughs> There's everybody screaming it. Yeah, screaming it. <laughs> screaming it. My roommate from uh, the summer, Wanda Harris, she and I are still very good friends oh, from the Bob wonderful. summer. And so we became roommates later. Good. And there's some stories behind my roommate. And um, she was from Palestine, Illinois. And uh, when, when her parents came in and saw that I was her roommate, the looks, it was, oh, yeah, wow. so, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. She kept her, I didn't, I didn't know what she was doing in the back of her closet. She hid her purse in the back of the closet. You're kidding. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know what it was. She was always being in the back. And oh, so, um, uh, and I was asleep one time and she was on the phone with her mom because you know there were no cell phones yeah. and and they were the neighbors were selling their house and she said at least you know they won't sell the house to any blacks oh my goodness so that was my reality of um welcome to campus welcome to campus yeah wow. but it didn't bother me good for you i'm who i am i have no interest but through that year um we became close. Oh, that's and, interesting. You know, not a long-term lasting closeness, but mm -hmm. um, uh, she was, she had fallen us. We didn't realize at the time. She didn't, she was like clockwork. She'd be in bed by this time. Mm -hmm. She's in engineering. And she didn't come to her, back to the dorm. She was in the room one time when I came back, and I was worried, sick about it. I went to talk to her. Um, Hall advisor, and and she studied with a young lady across the hall. They were both in engineering. I knocked on her door, and so we went up and down looking for her because we were concerned. Mm -hmm. um, and there had been an incident on campus that semester, which made us more concerned. But turns out she was asleep, and oh. she had fallen asleep down in one of the the study nooks, oh, and. The resident vice coach, your roommate is worried sick about you. And that, I think, was like a turning point she realized, for her, yeah. her, you know. I, you earned her respect. You yeah, know. yeah, 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 yeah. But, but that was, uh, that was an eye-opening experience to, to go through that. I and know. to, you know, I saw the look on the parents, but... This is my lived experience. I've lived in this skin all my life. Yeah. So I, I know a look. I see a look. And I, yeah. I know that's you, 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 
you don't like me because of my skin. Mm -hmm. You've formed your preconceived notions and you have your stereotypes in your mind. All I can do is live my life as I know who I am and and we'll see that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. To prove you wrong, but I just, I, I do me, mm-hmm. and and uh, if me doesn't get it, that's your issue. Yeah. That's your issue. So yeah. Well, it sounds yeah. like your yeah. parents had also prepared you for, you know, having to encounter people who weren't always going to be welcoming. Oh, oh absolutely. Mm-hmm. My mom, as a, uh, and her role there, there were women from. Carrie was known as a melting pot Mm -hmm. there, who were up from uh, Croatia or um, Poland. There were there was a mix of of women who were came there as custodians. So mom would always bring everybody together. I I would I tell folks she was she was ahead of her time Mm -hmm. in terms of what she did, and Mm -hmm. I saw her. uh, Didn't think of it at, at the time, but in hindsight. The little they would all get together, and my mom would would you know have recipes or exchange. So so they this group of women who 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 my mom from uh, Alabama coming up here that they were from their countries, and they all came together. So I saw that modeled at my parents' twenty fifth uh, wedding uh, anniversary. They had a they redid their vows, and all of her women were there from oh, from nice. her fellow co-workers were there. So I saw that. But when you're growing up, you you you're immersed in it, and you don't even realize yeah. it. So so it's those lived experience that I know. And 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 going to Lou Wallace, I became my class. I was a class vice president my senior year, That's and so I I was gonna. You weren't going to stop me from achieving my goals. Right. Uh, I had it in me, and, and so I got involved in student council. I got involved in I was in the choir. I was in the drama club. So, so um, it was in a new space, and and everybody didn't look like me, but that that didn't make a difference. I was going to. I, you weren't going to stop me from achieving my goals and 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 being me and being a part of this. So so. Um, when when I came to speak to Purdue, one of the things that I talk about is owning it. Mm-hmm. This entire campus is yours. You own it. Mm-hmm. Don't let anyone tell you you can only be in the women's groups or that mm-hmm. group. Be in the women's group. Be in. I was in BC. Uh, I was at the BCC. I was mm-hmm. in the Black Voices of Inspiration. I was a part of that. Yeah. All of this university is mine. Mm-hmm. And I tell the students, all of it is yours. You own it. Yeah. So don't let anybody tell you you don't belong here. So I didn't know my mom was preparing me for that when I went to Lou Wallace. It's, it's uh, touching to hear you talk about how she embraced p- these women from other countries who absolutely. probably had limited English and didn't know people. She sounds absolutely. like she set a, a really good example for She did. She did. Know, embracing all people. So, she, yeah. she did. So, so. So I, I saw it modeled, mm-hmm. and so I, um, I knew, mm-hmm. and um, my mom could talk to President of the United States, <laughs> or, or as she was, uh, as a, as a custodian or anybody, and that taught me as well, because sometimes people will look at you and assume some things, mm-hmm. and, and when I was at A and M, one of the custodians, you know, it's like. Hi, how you doing? You, you know, if I don't speak to you, that's like not speaking to my mom. Yeah. I, there is, you know, I'm, I, everybody is an individual, a, yeah. a, a person, a human being. Mm-hmm. I, I try not, we view, yes, you, we all come to the table with our preconceived notions, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, I'm me. You have to look at me as Katie. Cassandra, as as the child of a, a steel worker, as a child, as a deacon's daughter, as a custodian's daughter, yeah. you know, working. My parents work hard to get everything that they have. Mom would say, "Your dad brings in the money for our household. 
I work to get you the extra things, the dress, mm -hmm. the that you can't. So, so, so we, you know, we struggled in our middle class, working class, mm -hmm. but it was all about, you know, you're as good as that person over there that that came from privilege or whatever. Yeah. So that there's no barriers. There's, no, there's nothing that can stop you from achieving your goals, and we're dependent on you to do that. So my dad was tough in terms of, were you the best? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. did you make the best grades? And mm -hmm. his pressure was a different type. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, I was like, yes, dad, <laughs> yes, dad. Uh, no, I was number two. Why weren't you number one? So, 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 so he added that extra level. And did you do the right thing? Mm -hmm. That was the message later, mm -hmm. you know. So it's, it's in the DNA. Yeah. Strong foundation for strong foundations. Out. God first in everything. I mean, that deacon's daughter is driven in me, knowing that um, all things work together for the good. No matter what you're going through, know that in the end, God works it out for your good. So, 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 so that's that's what's that's the undergirding <laughs> that has kept me. That is what is the foundation. It is one in Christ, and so that. And your lived experiences where you can tell me something about race relations in America today. I can tell you what I have lived. Right, exactly. I can tell you what I've lived. Yeah. And I can tell you that I never would have thought that it would be to the point where we are today. That The fact that I am the only is, bothers me. Yeah. Bothers me a lot. It's very I, troubling. I'm very proud of being the first. Mm -hmm. But I'm very troubled. That I'm the only. I agree with you. I think this is a perfect time to stop because I want us to pick up with all the things that you've done to try to make sure that you don't remain the only. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so that's for part two. Absolutely, absolutely, Thank you. absolutely.